Um, so now we're going to focus on severe premenstrual problems, which is something that affects actually a significant amount of women. And uh, Human Crane Mode is developing the first treatment that is specifically designed for this disorder, premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Uh, so uh, this is a, com uh, a company that is based on research from Professor Torbjörn Beckström up in Umeå University uh, about how uh, how to prevent negative effects of our endogenous stress and sex hormone and their action on the brain. Uh, the company is owned by uh, an international group of investors, including the Karolinska Development. So, what is PMDD? It is the severest form of premenstrual syndrome that greatly interferes with the daily activities and functioning of these women during at least a week per month. Uh, the disorder has been uh, have a, had a diagnostic criteria in the US for more than 20 years. In Europe, it's we clearly doesn't really talk about PMDD. In Sweden, we talk about premenstrual dysphoric syndrome. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the diagnosis in Europe only talks about PMS as such. Although today there is actually a clear regulatory path also in Europe because EMA has issued a guideline for this disorder. And they have acknowledged this to a severe disease that need to be treated. PMDD is characterized by cyclic symptoms of depression, anxiety, irritability, loss of control that consistently occur during the luteal phase, that is the week before menstruation. And the severity of these symptoms are such that they have a large impact on the quality of life of these women, uh, inhibiting in particular their ability to social contact, that is, at home, at work, in, in any social s uh, situation. Uh, the prevalence is well established. Some 5% of all women in fertile age does actually have these kind of severe problems that corresponds to some six million women around Europe alone. It's a clearly undiagnosed condition and many are misdiagnosed also. So you can see this is a large market, it's a large market need and the reason for that is that we really don't have any good treatment alternatives. Typically these women are given antidepressants uh, with mixed effects the only really effective treatment is to give them hormonal uh, uh, treatment to stop the ovulation. But at the same time, you have to give them them complicated add back of hormones, which has to be titrated closely so you don't reinstate the symptoms again. So this really creates a need for a, a non-antidepressant, non-hormonal therapy. What is the pathogenesis? Well, it's not a consensus around that, but it's well established that there is something coming from the corpus lithium. And ovulation is a prerequisite for the symptoms to occur. And more and more points to the fact that these women are sensitive to a metabolite coming from progesterone. Uh, in particular, we're talking about allopregnanolone that will act on the brain uh, on, the, on the emotional center of the brain of these women and cause these negative symptoms. So the Eumocrine mood approach to treat this is based on a highly specific modulation to inhibit the provocateur causing this disorder. Our candidate drug is called TENT, UC1010 or sepranolone and it's the first class compound of a so-called GAMSA, a GABA-A modulating steroid antagonist. It is in fact actually an endogenous compound that we think these women would benefit from. So how is it working? Well, it's working via so-called allosteric modulation. If you have a, a pharmacologist, you understand that. Um, when this, the GABA system is the, the general moderating system of the brain, and when a signal is supposed to be transmitted in the neuron, there is a uh, uh, release of GABA from the presynaptic terminal to the uh, postsynaptic terminals where we have GABA-A receptors. These are chloride channels. And when GABA binds to that, you have a rapid and transient influx of chloride like this. Uh, 
In the presence of a GABA steroid, such as allopregnanolone, there will be a conformational change of the receptor, and you can clearly see how much more chloride is flooded in. So it enhances the signal of, of GABA. And this is what the women for PMDD are sensitive to. So following the ovulation, we have an increase in the concentration of these steroids. UC1010, it binds also to the receptor and inhibits the conformational change. So you can see in the presence of 1010, we normalize the signal again. In vivo, we have shown that we have effects in, in rats uh, by inhibition of allopregnanolone-induced effects on anxiety, also in a kind of PMDD model in rats. Uh, and in you we also have human data in a pharmacodynamic model looking at GABA receptor activation where we can block allopregnanolone induced effects. So the next question is will we do ha have effect in patients? Well, we have just about to finish a phase 2A study. Uh, this has been run in, in Sweden as a uh, um, controlled randomized study. We have included 120 patients from 10 sites around Sweden. Uh, all women with verified PMDD, and we have given them UC1010. The end point is, as uh, stated by the guideline, a, a rating scale that is validated specifically for PMDD. Uh, so we are in a very exciting time, uh, waiting for results just within a few weeks from now. Uh, we have been overwhelmed by the response uh, on willingness to participate in this study. And exactly as, as Gunilla said, these women, they, they find this in the internet and they are really uh, wanting to participate. This points to the fact that this is a great need for something new here. So, uh, in addition, then, well, we have then 1010, which is then in this clinical study in a subcutaneous product. And uh, this product will actually offer us a strategic opportunity to differentiation from the inexpensive and not well functioning antidepressant <coughs> agents that's out there, and thereby create a new market, which we really have to do. But in addition, we also have uh, a 1010 analog, uh, which is uh, for oral administration, so they can be offered as a second generation product. So, planning for success, of course, given that we now have positive data within a, a month or two, uh, Human Cranial Mood wants to, uh, we are planning for the continued development, uh, and for that we need to raise uh, money. So we are looking for some 15 to 20 million uh, euros to uh, uh, prepare and perform a, a new study, which will be a phase two slash phase three study, actually. Uh, and in parallel, we're also working with the oral uh, lead compound. And then, of course, we are looking for licensing opportunities uh, because I think it's very important that we bring on one of the bigger pharmas in this. We are creating a new market in, a, in an essence and it is a significant market.